Never see me wear a suit of white Oh, I'd love to wear a rainbow every day And tell the world that everything's okay But I'll try to carry off a little darkness on my back Till things are brighter, I'm the man in black So I'd like to talk about something definitely life-changing in a lot of videos I mentioned things that are uh, that do affect me but this specific subject changed my life I remember my kid my first child being born I was there it was amazing the best day of my life I also remember the day that I thought was the last day I'd be with him. Vividly, actually. And so, God, I really want to talk about God's purpose for you. And this is one of many things that have happened to me, but this is the, this is the one that really showed me God's purpose for me. I, uh, I remember my son being born, my two daughters, but I was there for my son. I was allowed to be in the room, and I remember the whole, the whole process. And I remember the amount of joy I felt from that moment was, like, untouchable. Like, I was bulletproof, smiling ear to ear, and my smile went around the back of my head. Couldn't contain myself. Saw my kid being born. I remember that joy, and I also remember about four months ago, that same kid, 17 years old, was driving to school. He's a new driver, but a good driver. Hadn't had quite enough sleep. On a country road, kind of a sharp turn, and just blinked for a second. And just a second. The car went off the road, and my daughters are with him. And he wasn't particularly having a good morning. They were was kind of you know grumpy he hadn't had a lot of sleep which is my fault I should have kind of enforced that more so they went to school he was taking his sisters to school because they were running late they missed the bus and so around I'd say 8 30 I got a call from my son he was pretty serious most of the time but this time he was hysterical he was crying he was whimpering he was broken when the sound in his voice was the same sound you would hear if someone were begging for their life and he was yelling dad it's my fault it's my fault it's my fault and chills are running down my back and my hair and I don't remember ever being upset. The only thing I could think of in that moment was finding a way for my son to have peace. Obviously I was scared to death that I lost one of my girls and he hadn't even got to that point yet to tell me what happened. But he was so distraught and broken, like a little kid and he didn't know what to do. That. The vision of that or hearing that from my kid who I've never heard that from was so daunting that all I could do was think of a way to give him some peace because I was scary hearing him that way and sad at the same time so um, as the conversation went on he was hysterical and he was cal he calmed down a little bit but he was Telling me that the girls, the girls, the girls, the, they're in an accident. And he was kind of crying as he was talking. And he, and he said, I'll never forgive myself. I'll never forgive myself. And I remember hearing that, that echoing in my head. Still do. And um, so he called me. I think someone else was a country road. I think someone else might have called 911. Uh, when I get to the... I have a point to the story here, but I get to the uh, 
the site and I just see the white Mazda upside down on his back down in a ditch from a distance and I see ambulance all direction parked in a circle uh, there's no amount of descriptive words that can explain the feeling I had when I saw the car and as I got closer uh, my wife was driving at the time I was in the passenger seat because I couldn't breathe and I knew <clears throat> he was on his way to school to drop the girls off they were running late I knew what road he'd be on and I go down that road and the car is upside down there's ambulance everywhere and like something out of a Steven Spielberg movie it didn't seem real and I walk up on the site and um, I can see somebody through the crowd of EMTs, you know, dealing. I saw my son kind of crawling on his belly like you'd see a military guy doing a low crawl, you know, under, under like wire, you know, barbed wire, crawling on his elbows, and he was just broken. Like his face, his emotions, his spirit was just gone. He was gone. He couldn't talk. I saw my youngest daughter, Camry, on a, on a stretcher with these uh, head braces on both sides of her head. She's 12. My other daughter on another stretcher who, by nature, she's really emotional, so things get to her a bit more than normal, whereas Camry, she's, she, nothing bothers her. Um, Bear's problem, with besides him being a little bloody and scraped up, was seeing his, his younger sister, however, her tongue was cut, and she was upside down on the seatbelt, so the, the blood was kind of coming down, so it looked worse than it was. Uh, getting to the point of the story in that scene I remember feeling like I was all by myself on some other planet in some other solar system as far from society and civilization as I could possibly be completely alone and I remember thinking to myself, I wasn't even trying to think to myself, I just was. I was thinking about um, I was thinking about what happened. I was thinking about mortality and life. In that moment, I couldn't make sense out of it like I was it was like I was there but I wasn't even I wasn't alive I was just everything that mattered in that second that instant felt like it was you know just came crashing down the car had flipped upside down and the ironic part is my son you know he dodged to the right side and actually get out of the way and then the car kind of crushed forward where he was and my other my daughter in the front seat her body kind of slammed forward. It would have went through the windshield, but my son was kind of in front of her, and all the debris from the accident kind of flew to the back, and my youngest daughter was hanging by a seatbelt, which I think protected her. And on both sides of the vehicle, there was a light pole that was live, broken in half, completely off the pole, you know, broken, and a tree that was completely broken off, about eight feet in the air, which means that the car went airborne and kind of railed the pole landed on its back and the doors were trapped shut so bear my son somehow managed to unhook the girls or my youngest daughter and drag them out the back the hatchback which was available where, where it was where it landed somehow through all of that you know uh, the paramedics get there and my young my oldest daughter she's the one who she easily gets worried. She looked over at me. My son's on the ground looking up at me with this face like he's sorry what he did to me or did to the girls because he, he's very protective of the girls. My oldest daughter, she looked over me while on a gurney in the ambulance and said, Daddy, am I going to die? Am I going to die? And I said, Baby, would I lie to you? Would I ever lie to you about something this serious? And she said, no, Daddy. And I said, you're going to be fine. 
I wasn't lying to her because before we went to the ambulance door and I loaded her up when my son was on the ground with the two girls getting you know fixed up on the gurneys God put it on my heart it was amazing and if I can if I can be in a situation that traumatic I don't care what 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 else in the world's going on but if I can be in a situation that bad that horrible horrifying and the next thing that happened to me happen then we can get there anything because I'll tell you what happened they're laying on the ground the gurneys I am mortified like I have loss of emotion I don't know what I'm thinking and all I remember doing was getting down on my knee there's a I have a picture of it and putting my hand on both of my kids actually all three of my kids I had my head on my son and my hand on my daughters my hand on both my daughters and somebody took a picture of it and I remember praying and I prayed a lot in my life but I have never prayed like this I remember praying with no emotion Lord if you if it's your will only if it's your will if you bring my kids through this and it's your will to do that I will serve you for the rest of my life 100% I'll never turn back now, I may not have necessarily prayed the right way but I will tell you that when I did it it was the one time and all of my prayers that I opened my eyes when I stood to lose the most that I knew for sure it would be fine right in that moment and that was when paramedics and no one had any idea if they lived you know even lived through it no one had any idea but in that prayer I remember hearing God's voice to me telling me they're fine just like that and that's in the midst of losing my entire family that was when I went to the ambulance and I, my daughter had asked me if she says daddy am I gonna die and I said have I ever lied to you baby would I lie to you about something that's important she says nope and I said well listen to me and I said look at me I said daddy promises you that you're fine you're gonna be just fine it just looks scary with all the people around I promise she says okay I believe you and she didn't freak out and she always freaks out about stuff like this get to the hospital there's a chaplain beside me there's ambulance there's people everywhere and they're worried about me you know going off or whatever and uh, my daughter she find out she has a broken rib and a bruised lung but and I said babe how you doing she goes she's good to go my youngest daughter oldest daughter had some bumps and bruises my son scraped up but a couple hours later after testing and all kinds of stuff the chaplain the people that work for the hospital they're all talking to me and they say We look for bruising, bleeding, internal bleeding, for broken bones, for bruised arteries. There's nothing wrong with them. And I said, what is the likelihood? And one, of the, one of the guys there said, there isn't one. I said, how is that possible? And they said, we don't know. Then I talked to my youngest daughter who barely even... She knows about God, we, you know, it's part of our household, but she doesn't have a discerning spirit yet about it at all. And I'm hoping I'm saying this right, that I'm not off on the details, but she says, Dad, who was the, the black lady, the girl, the lady that pulled us out of the car? She was wearing a nurse's outfit at the scene. And um, here's the funny part. Now, my youngest daughter doesn't really know God, but the funny part is it was on a country road and there were no people at the scene before us. I mean, the, the ambulance that pulled up, there were just a bunch of white guys, uh, no women there, no nurse's outfit, didn't exist, didn't happen. Who was she? Middle of nowhere, I mean, that has me baffled. Um, the scenario of the way the car was wrecked and how everything happened in worldly in worldly terms is impossible. It couldn't happen that way. 
what I'm getting at is God has everything planned. Obviously, he knows A to Z. He knows the whole process. And, uh, you know, we constantly try to figure things out on our own without the help of God. Me, I do it too. But just like it says in Job, I don't know the exact numbers. I should be prepared, but it's in Job. He was a man in the Bible who basically was wealthy. He had you know, lots of kids and lots of cattle and you know all kinds of different stuff. He was very wealthy. I think he was the wealthiest guy in that time period. I'm not positive on that. Uh, good reason to look it up. Job's a really good book. What I've read of it. Anyway, Job was very wealthy, and I think there was more or less a test at one point where the devil, you know, everything was everything was taken from Job. I believe by the devil to once again I always say I don't know the Bible that well but I want you to research it for yourself it has to do with Job having everything taken from him to be tested to have his faith tested in God so basically at the worst possible moment the worst possible things that could have happened is his kids got diseases um, all this stuff happened basically the, the end of the the way it pans out is Job stayed faithful no matter what it was no question. He said, nope, I'm not going to turn my back on God. God promises me or Jesus promised me what he promised me, and that's it. Lost everything. Didn't matter to him. And I'm telling you, the viewers, the people watching me, it doesn't matter to me. I don't want to go broke or lose my stuff or lose my family, but if that's what it takes, I mean, we'll say it this way. It's not going to change my faith, period. It doesn't matter who writes writes me and doesn't like something I write or uh, who tries to give me a reason why things are wrong with the you know the Bible if one thing is wrong to me the whole thing's wrong period if it's in there it's supposed to be in there if it's not in there it's not supposed to be in there so I just want to say that no matter how bad the situation is no matter how bad your and yours may be worse than mine you might have lost a kid or your mom or your brother your aunt your uncle your wife your husband whatever it doesn't matter I had a friend who lost a daughter a couple of years ago a very close friend of mine uh, and their family suffered horribly um, and I'm not gonna elaborate too much on how how it affected the parents especially the well, all of them, but the father went through a very hard time. Uh, and that's one of the many reasons it probably brought him to that point. But I tried to be in his life as much as possible to help him through that. But he made it through it. He's still dealing with it. And you're still going to deal with what you're dealing with. Whoever the person is that's watching this video, uh, I'm sure it'll help a lot of people, but there's somebody looking at me right now specifically that needed this and so I want you to know that I'm doing this video for you I almost surely based on the situation thought my kids weren't going to be with me the next day but they were when I did that prayer and I stood up I wasn't worried it, it happened like that before the ambulance even left that's never happened to me before especially something that bad that is a miracle that is my story that's my biggest story and that's the reason why if anyone especially people who know me you know Wally mom there's other people who know me but whoever watches this and knows me you know that you don't know if this is who I am now or if I'm going through a phase or whatever. This is who I am. I am a guy just like you who's going to go or has went through something and my eyes were open to everything. And I'm blessed to have the things I have. I mean, I have a great job and had all the money I wanted to make and have great stuff and great vehicles and blah 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 but 
nothing matters to me more than this, more than my walk with God because he brought me through it. He gave my kids back. He brought my father-in-law back. He brought my dad closer, my sisters, my brothers. He brought my mom to God. He brought, he's gonna bring my kids to God. I mean, my, you know what I mean. I'm not good with words. So I just want to say that, yeah, nothing's going to change my faith and nothing should change yours. And it's been kind of a hard time and there's going to be more, but that's all I want to say, guys. But either way, I love you. God loves you. I hope you have a blessed night. I hope uh, whoever's watching this that needed it, I hope it changes your life. And I love you guys. Peace.